You've got ideas, you've got ambition, you've got no time, or so you think. I'm Marissa Lonick, and I help busy moms with big dreams and no time. Join me each week as I dive into time management strategies, goal setting and achieving framework, and inspiring guests who are juggling mom life, work life, fill in the blank life. Dreams don't work unless you do, and just because you're a mom doesn't mean you can't still make it happen, whatever it means to you. Welcome to the Mama Work It podcast. Hello, hello, mama friends. Welcome back to another amazing episode of the Mama Work It podcast. Today, we've got Kia Hyder on the show, one of my favorite mamas out there. Kia is a mama four and the business development architect and revenue designer of Think Design Studio, LLC. She helps entrepreneurs wanting to build their purposed businesses. I know firsthand what magical superpowers Kia has at taking a client's vision, capturing their essence and awesomeness, and making it into a money-making service or product that solves problems. Kia was also featured as a guest expert in Biz Management Club, where she gave an amazing workshop on building a solid foundation in your business, which is so necessary when you are looking to turn your biz dreams into biz goals, into biz reality. I am just so excited to be chatting with you today, Kia. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. I am so excited for this time and just I love everything that you're doing and I love all the episodes, like all the topics you talk about on the podcast. I think it's so needed and it's so refreshing. So thank you for having me. Yeah, we'll add another one to your to your faves. You're the guest today. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So first things first, I always love to ask this question. I want to hear more about you. What's your story and what got you started as being a business architect? Well, it's so funny. Growing, like when I went to college, my dad was corporate for decades. And so I always figured business, it was like stuffy. And I'm like, I don't want to do business. I'm a creative. I want to dance. And then when I went to undergrad, I was like, what is the most opposite? I'm I'm doing psychology and sociology, you know, and liberal arts. I was all of that. Finance, business was not the thing. I'm like, oh, no graduated. And then, you know, you get out of college and you get a job. And so I'm working in corporate and I started out as a, a analyst. I wanted to be a financial analyst. Like first I was an admin, like literally early on and then got pulled into a financial analyst on a program and just got into finance. And like, I got just developed through there in the finance world. I'm like, what? And this is someone did not like math, but like, All of a sudden, I'm building spreadsheets and pricing sheets. And then I left there and went to a nonprofit. Well, it was a school, but uh, I was in the finance department again, and then shifted to a nonprofit doing business development and then get back into another corporate uh, where I was there for 15 years in business development. And that's when I got Back into the more federal side, I really started to understand even more business, but the strategy, like I loved strategy. And so I decided to get my master's in business and working in it and then going and learning the principles and how things put and being able to practically put it together and understanding the flow. It was opened my eyes. Wow. I just was a thirst for knowledge and real time seeing how things worked. And then I actually then continued, like married a couple of kids. <laughs> and then it's like, you know, I wanted more. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go for my doctorate. So I got in for, I did two years in doctoral studies in strategy and innovation um, with, and then it was pregnant with my third child and, or second child. And then my mother got sick. So I was working full time, going for my doctorate, mom, all the things. And then it just family hit. And it was like the work, it was too much because going after your doctor, it's insane. (laughs) It's like, it's, it's a lot of work. And so 
but I learned so much. I mean, I have research articles after research articles. It, it just, it's a whole other level, but it was amazing because it was back in when people are now just talking about the things that we were talking about in the research articles that are now you're seeing them in Harvard Business Review. And now you're seeing them in their buzzwords, but this is when emotional intelligence and um, disruptive innovation with Clayton Christensen were just like the research, the actual research studies that he did were going through those, you know? And so being able to go and take that and into the corporate world and being able to see strategy. And then I worked at Lockheed Martin in business development and to see them just catching on to this, we're doing this thing called disruptive innovation. Like, man, you are so behind the academic world, but that infused more of my desire. Like, wow, just the wealth of knowledge I've received, it's already ahead of where the business world currently is. And I started to see strategy as art. And it was looking at business in a creative way to get things done. And so I had my, I was pregnant with my third child. Um, the company was breaking up that portion of the company we were in and it was being bought out. And I had the option to either leave and, you know, take and go full out. I had started my business in 2008 as a side hustle while I was working there, but then it was like 2014, the company was split and they were like, you can stay on and go in a contract. I'm like, um, no. I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and take, I got the years. Let me cut me my check. (laughs) I'm going to go out into and go full head, full out, full entrepreneur. And so with little baby number three, and I went full-time mompreneur and um, shifted my business to from marketing and design to really solution and service base. And that's how this whole, the business architect came into place because I always helped people create new revenue, but the foundation and the plan behind it, not just, you should do this. It's like, no, this is how you do it. And here's all the pieces to make that happen. And it just, it didn't matter the industry. It didn't matter what they brought. It was this formula that worked time and time again. I applied it to my business and that's how it became. And I always saw the plan and it's like, yeah, that's just how my brain works. You tell me something and it's like, this is how you could do it. And here's the plan. And then I get to, I'm still a designer. So I also am able to create the designs and create, which taps into that piece that I love. So that's how it, it, it merged, but it's just so funny that my, I started out not really wanting to have anything to do with business. And now I love business. I just, I just absolutely love it. And I love what it can do. Oh my God. I I know you outside of this podcast, but I didn't know so many things about you. And I love that journey that you were this super creative individual and then you were a financial analyst. I mean, how funny. Okay. Um, but you know what? We all have to take the journey, right? To get there. Mm-hmm. It's part of the process. So totally, yeah. totally get that. Well, many of our listeners are moms who are juggling a lot on their plate, right? Mm -hmm, Maybe mm -hmm. even feeling called to tap into something else additional on top of all this. Like you started that as a side hustle. I started my business as a side hustle. I know that was the case for me. Um, How can you know if you're dreaming about that purpose, that passion? How can you know that it'll be something worth pursuing? It'll be something profitable. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's a good question. So I think it's a couple of parts to that. Um, one, from the straight technical business piece of it, one, is there a need? Like anything in business, it needs to solve something that would be something of value or it's going to help somebody solve something for them. Like somebody wants that or they need that or it's going to improve their life. That right there is like the first piece. Is there somebody out there that, needs what you have and will pay for it. And so understanding how you solve what you're going, like what it is that you feel moved to do, it needs to solve something. It needs to either solve it, alleviate it, make it better, improve it. Um, But it has to be related to 
somebody else outside of you and your family are going to benefit from it. That's the first thing. You pass that threshold um, and you can look at that. You look at the market. You look at what else is similar in our, you know, say it's life coaching, right? Are people paying for life coaches, period? You know what? Yes, it's a thing. Okay, cool. I That's more likely I'm in the bucket. Um, when it's something, but to make it what is yours, that's when you tap into your purpose. That's when you tap into what are you awesome at, that you love doing that can help someone that can solve that. So you put that piece to it and there's somebody that it's going to help with that. Okay. Now, you know, <laughs> you're, it's making it even more solid. And then you add the last piece where you are good at it and you put the systems and things to deliver it in a way that's even more favorable. Solid. Like profit. It's, it's not even, a question, it's you just get it in front of them and you do all those things and you're talking about the need that goes into your marketing engagement. But at the end of the day, if you create something, if you're doing something that's going to make somebody's life better and you're great at it and you enjoy it, and I say you have to enjoy it because that energy you feel doing it is going to pour into it and it'll show them and it'll draw them even more to it, it's going to be profitable. It's a matter, then it comes down to then your pricing and all, and then you get to the technical piece. But that just, that alone, if you can pass those thresholds, you can feel very confident in what you're building and and growing um, and it's putting out into the world. And then the last piece of that, which gets, for me, it's also, I get on the spiritual side and that's where I feel, because that's like, I'm a faith-based, like this is how I operate. I feel that if God gives you something and he gives you a vision, He's going to provide for you, period. That's it. It's like, nope, we just got to build it. And his time isn't our time. But, and you can check me on this, it has never failed. Like everything, when people tap into what they're supposed to, it, and it's not, oh, this mad rush, no matter what you see online, things don't just like come flying in in this flood you know there's things you can do to make that but really what you're supposed to do and what you're passionate about I feel that he gives you exactly what you need and can take on and just keeps building and as you get stronger and you build your bandwidth he fills it more so that's where that's the solid business practical, but also the other aspect that I look at and looking at, is that what you're going to do? Is that passion, is that purpose, is it going to be profitable? Yeah. I do think the entrepreneurial journey undoubtedly is a spiritual one. No matter what your faith is, no matter what you believe in, the universe, God, the angels, source, whatever it is, You must have that intuitive guidance, like that connection. Otherwise, you're going to question every single thing you're doing every single day. Everything. Yeah. Everything. I I don't know how people don't do, you know, like it's just, it'll drive you crazy. It'll absolutely, like you won't get very far because the posture, like there's so much that crowds in if you don't have that grounding piece, you know, yeah. that will allow you to get there. So that, that is, it's so true, but yep. And yeah. it, and it gives you that confidence too, because if you have confidence in something outside of yourself that is untouchable, it's like, Oh yeah, this is going to work. Oh, I, I may not know all my skills and, but I know like for real, like I know God and I know how awesome he is. And if he can create the earth and create all these things, I think he can handle this vision he gave me and make that happen. I just need to do the work and do all the things that I'm tasked to do to make that happen. Yeah. Let's dive into that self-doubt a little bit because Mm -hmm. I know when I was first starting my business, there was a lot of self-doubt that crept in, like not Mm -hmm. only because Mm -hmm. I was new to the game, but also because it felt like the market might be saturated already with what I was doing, Mm -hmm. right? I started my business as a mom blog many Mm -hmm. mom blogs out there. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. you know, looking back now, I know this was part of the journey. Like, I know I wasn't special in feeling this feeling of self-doubt because most Mm -hmm. of us feel this early on in the journey. Mm -hmm. But for Mm -hmm. someone listening in those shoes right now, Mm -hmm. can you tell them like, what does it take to create something that has 
never been seen before out mm-hmm. there. Yeah. And that's, that is such a good um, question. The first, so again, I'm going to give like the business pieces because there's a framework that comes in. Yeah. Um, I love the practicality. Like I'm all about it, but I feel like it's good to pair it with other stuff too. The mindset work, all of that. Yeah. It is because it's, it's not, it has to be fully from you. It has to be when you tap into that purpose and all of the awesome and that deep that's you, we're each uniquely made, period. Like you being you, how you authentically, and people throw that around, but honestly, you showing up and all the things that like that thing that people like you do that so well, or you have a special way you do it. That's how you show up. You bring that and what you're passionate about. And then you mix like there, I pull in blue ocean strategy. Um, This is like the business pieces of it, but the whole concept of tapping into areas that have not been touched, doing things that, um, Others may be missing. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's completely new. It's just using it in an innovative way that actually um, calls more value. Uh, It could be like, oh, it's an Apple product, but this is what's missing. It's where are the gaps that's not being taken care of, but also adding in elements of disruptive innovation where you're utilizing what may be out there, but not in the way it's used. Like you may use a health, something in the healthcare industry and then mix it with something that's benefiting in the food industry because at the end of the day, they're delivering X, Y, and Z that are the same and then putting that together. And that's with what you're awesome with. It's like, whoa, <laughs> it meets the need. And like, I did not, it doesn't necessarily mean it's completely from scratch, never been seen as far as that, but you've like, I never would have put that. Like I didn't use like, wow. And that's what happened in the whole disruptive innovation phase. These people in Silicon Valley, they're sitting at their kitchen table doing exactly that, looking at, why don't we take this platform from over here and merge it with this thing over here? And it's less money because it already exists. So we don't have to do startup fees. We just take that platform, switch it, add it with this platform, go to the art industry, add this, mix it. And now we have this to market and people, you don't know where that came from and how, because it's never been like, who put that together? That is how you create. It's that same concept for yourself is mixing in what is missing, what is not. Like when you figure out this is what I bring to the world and what's out there right now and what's not and what is not being met. There's a gap. There is something that is not being, it's being missed that I bring the word, this, you say this to yourself, like I bring and I do especially well that, and I'm going to show up my way, or it's something that you're seeing that may be there, but everybody's miss. Everybody's doing it wrong. Everybody's focusing on the wrong thing. Or I don't want to say the wrong thing. Everybody's focusing heavy on, I'll say like branding. Everybody you see, I'm brand strategist, brand, da, 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 and they're like, this is the foundation, it's the foundation. And so you may think like, well, I want to get into that, but it's so saturated. It's like, right. But what is the point of branding, you know, and understanding the foundation of it? It's like, well, it's getting your vision out there visually and the message. But if I can mix that and bring my special way to do this and actually focus on the core, well, that may be missing, you know, so it's looking at what is missing. And then what do you bring that's so special that can fill in that space? That confidence comes because it's how you deliver it and nobody can copy you. Right. And ultimately, you know, no one has your voice. No one has your thoughts, at least not right now. Or your story. I'm in the middle of watching (laughs) on Amazon um, that show. Oh, my gosh. It's escaping me upload. It's oh, kind of I haven't fut- seen that yet. It's kind of futuristic. And now they're, sorry for the spoilers if you haven't seen it, but now they're getting into getting people's thoughts. At this oh. point, at this day and age, nobody's got your thoughts, you guys. All right. That is unique. 
That is unique. And that is something only you bring to the table. No one has those ideas. No one has, you know, the tone of voice you use when you articulate something, especially something you're passionate about. Nobody can write that copy the way you can write that copy. So those are the unique things I think you're talking about. Yes. And, and when it comes from you, Someone is going to copy it. Like you just have to prepare for that. You have to prepare for that. But you take comfort in the fact that they're copying. That means they are not the originator. So someone may take something that they hear you say, like, that's amazing, but that's all they get. You know where it came from. So while they took that one little morsel that you shared, you can do 30 more off the top of your head because it came from you. And you understood, you see, so it's like when you tap into the way you come forward and how you, it, it, there isn't competition because you're you and you're comfortable in that. And it's like, you can have that because there's more from where that came from. It's like, that's all you don't know. Um, you don't know all, you don't have my story. You don't have my depth. You don't have my experience. You could have two people have the same degree. And they have different lived experiences with that. They had different ways they took that information in, different stories that they went through. Yeah, completely. Yeah. All right, let's jump in. Can we talk about pricing a little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have my own system on this Mm -hmm. that I introduce in Biz Management Club, but I'm really curious how you determine pricing. So tell us, Mm -hmm. how do you know what to charge when you're starting your business? So I call it back of the napkin, you know, <laughs> like going in like the pricing and financial analyst sheets, like I got spreadsheets and all of those, like I have a pricing sheet, but the bottom line is looking at first, you have to get your base price. Like you have to decide, um, what it is that you want like for your life as a lot of people are solopreneurs. And so it's, um, what is it that I want to bring in? for the life that I want to live one. And then how much are my expenses like that I have to cover if you know, you're know you married or if you're single, like what do you have to cover to live? And then what do you need to cover a year um, for what you want? You know, I want to travel. I want to go and um, we're looking at, I want to save and buy a house. And so I want, you know, income for that. And so I want to save about X dollars a year going towards the things that I, I love or want to do. So you factor that in, you factor in how much it costs to run your business and like overhead, all the things, uh, if you have a building or whatever the costs are to run the business. And then um, again, back of the napkin, you put in your tax, what you would pay like, for the business and to get down to this is how much. I want to bring in <laughs> to cover high level what I need to come in a year. And then we go to the next piece is how much are you going to work? Like how long do, how many hours a week do you want to work? Honestly, on your business client work or whatever it is you're doing that's facing um, administrative work. How much time do you want to spend to get your work, your billable hours? And then as the, the formula plugs it in, but you you um, divide that out and then you look at to see how many hours you are able to work a year. And then you divide that into the total you want to bring in to get your bill rate. And that bill rate, that's your starting point. And you can add another like a profit margin to that if you want to like to kind of see, all right, let me add another 10%, 15%. Now you can get over to your solutions because now you have your bill rate and you take that solution. So let's say you want to do a, um, a coaching program, all right? And so you do your labor and your expenses. And so is it going to be all you? Are you bringing in an admin? Are you going to have someone do some things? all the labor items, how much you're going to charge, like the hourly and what your, um, your, your bill rate that you calculated on the front, the main thing, plug that in. And then how long every line item of what you do, if it's going to be one-on-one time, that's a line item. If it's going to be, um, like every task that you do to deliver this solution, this revenue stream that you've created, 
how long does it take for each of those tasks? And then you calculate that by to get that labor cost. And then whether you're doing it, whatever, however you do, you add that up. And then all the expenses related to it, printing, any whatever those deliverables, the systems you have to use for that specifically to get down to this is how much this should be. And then you can add another if you want to put another margin on top of that to get you know a profit margin. But that gives you your baseline. And so then you take that number and this is where most of the time clients, they like freak out or they have all these little mental things they have like, I can't charge that. That's, I said, but that's where you, to get what you want, this is where you should be. Then you go and look at the market. And so you look at what you're bringing and you kind of do a market comparison and seeing it's like, you know what? That is more high where things are, but I'm adding value in here because where everyone else may be doing this, I'm adding this extra thing. And I've got 20 years on this joker. So that itself is more value than someone coming out the gates, you know, so you can start looking at the justification and then seeing, you know what, what else can I add to increase the value, but not necessarily more cost for me. And to, to kind of go and work with the price. And so I give people with that, you have a range and that gives you a baseline to work from, to have a discussion, like to start your pricing. And so anytime any client comes to me and the membership or not, they're like, I have this new thing. How much should I charge? First thing I say is what's the base rate we established? Like, let's start with the base rate. I pull out my calculators. Like, okay, <laughs> let's, what are you going to do? And that's how I, I, again, it's back of the napkin. There's a lot more you get in and all the tax, but it's just general concept for pricing. That's back of the napkin. You can always figure out where you should be when you're kind of price something out. So that's how I, <laughs> that's yeah, great. yeah, I love it. Um, I feel like we have a lot of synergies and how we're thinking about that. So mm-hmm. I, I feel good about my method after <laughs> hearing your, hearing your answer there. Nice. All right. Let's jump over. Let's kind of move into the mompreneur world for a minute. Mm-hmm. All right. Cause it's a juggle. And to be quite honest, you, my friend, you make balancing motherhood and entrepreneurship look easy. Like I know right now you've got all four of your kiddos home with you, you're homeschooling, like you're building and growing multiple empires, you're married. I mean, juggle is just like a lighthearted way to describe (laughs) what you're doing. So what are some of your pointers, some of your hacks that you can provide to someone who's maybe in those early stages of starting or growing their business, who already feels pretty busy with their day to day? Mm -hmm. How can they make this happen and follow that purpose? they feel called to do without either burning out or just Mm -hmm. wanting to give up. Because I think it's really easy early on to just be like, this is too hard. I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm Oh yeah. I mean, and this is coming from like, this has been the, the war wounds and all the things. And what I have learned one before anything is be gracious with yourself. Like just, be gracious because as a mom, we're wearing so many hats and so many roles um, that only we can fill, honestly. And so it's understanding that, um, but also treating your business also like a child, like one of your children. And I think that is really important because nobody's going to give you time to work on your business. Nobody's going to give you time to develop those ideas. Like, oh my gosh, here you go. Nope. It's not going to happen. Um, a lot of times you're not going to understand it. People as close to you, they mean, I mean like, what are you doing? I don't you have to treat it like your your child and and decide intentionally to show up for your business every day. Yeah. But also in that understanding that every day is not going to be the same and and things will happen and so I look at okay I need to make everything fluid. So having online systems, things that I could work from my phone because you may have a child in one arm and you know, you're trying to figure out and every, and, and having the thought that every moment is an opportunity 
to get something done. You know, like it's always, I know they say, oh, you take a break. My bread, my business is always on my mind. It's either something is content, like that's that's an idea, or I'll see something, or and so having tools, find the tools that work for you, that capture how you think, how you move, how you organize, because where one person may love Dubsado, another person was Absada, uh, Asana, somebody else is like, I have to have my planner, my physical planner, or I do all three. The thing is, is finding what works for you and getting the tools that you can have on a dime that help you to capture ideas, to manage and monitor what's going on in the back end, to be able to, if you have clients, to be able to connect and respond. But also, you need to set expectations. Set expectations for family, for clients, for everybody in your circle on and for yourself, <laughs> which is the most important is, you know what? These are non-negotiables. I am working on, on this day, I work, I do my CEO day and everything gets pushed out, you know? And it's really important to set those expectations. I let my clients know I'm a mompreneur. I got kids. Stuff is still going to get done. You may have a child coming in on one of our calls or I'm working this or I have to shift or I'm working late. And so I'm going to get this to you by this time. And it's the communication and keeping it fluid. But I set the expectation before they even start working with me. So they understand it is by no means going to take away from what I do. It's just, this is my modus operandi. Okay. And then the other piece that I think it's understanding your flow but also having a clear plan of what you want to do. Because you did a great post today about being busy and being productive. And it's like, yes, figure out every day, like every week, what are your needle moving activities? Yes. Period. It it needs to be needle moving because we don't have the luxury to just sit and like build and do, no. So anytime you have a moment, it needs to be the bulk of your concentration time needs to be on needle moving activities. And those are activities that are gonna make the most impact for your business. I do design. So um, like I just had a conversation with one of my members cause they're a designer and they were stuck on this mood board. And I'm like, this looks really good but get off of it now because that mood board is not making you money. The mood board is supposed to inspire you to make the products, make the products. Cause all this time you're spending on finding the right picture. You could have been making 12 products from now. That's going to make you money. So that's the difference in your activity is looking at what do you have to do to run the business, but which activities, which tasks are gonna be needle movers. Is it more advantageous to take that brain time that you have when the kids are taking a nap and to actually strategize and plan out what your next collab is going to be? Or is it this big project if you're, you know, do client-based work and it's like, this is the biggest piece of the project that takes the most brain energy from me? Everybody's asleep. Let me knock this out right now because this is gonna move the project forward, right? doing that triage kind of thought where it's like, no, 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 no. If I would love to do these three things today, but if push comes to shove and something happens, cause stuff will happen, I will absolutely do the needle moving thing first and then everything else. And you focus on that and establish what those things are and then, and plan that out as like, no matter what, these things get done, your business will move forward. You will be more at peace because you're seeing the progress. When you don't, it's nothing takes you down is when things aren't moving. Oh yeah. You can't, and you can't get stuff done. Mm-hmm. And everybody's going crazy and everyone's crying. All this stuff is happening. I need this for school, this, da, 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 and like all the things are happening and you couldn't get things moving forward. It's like, I'm going to go sit in the closet and cry. Yeah. Or and, Momzilla comes out. <laughs> oh, and you're, or you're snapping at everybody because you didn't accomplish the things that you want and need to move your business. Cause nobody in the house going to move your business for you. And it will ooze out 
into how you interact with the people you love. You will be like, it just happens. And so you have to move differently and be in a flow that, you know, push comes to shove. I have to get this done. I have to do this and I have to do this. And that will help alleviate because life is going to life. Kids are going to, it's just, that's the reality and find what works for you. And that's, that's like, that's, those are the hacks. Like once I figured that out and figured out how I work and knew that certain systems, that's just that I could set up a beautiful system, but I don't use it. Yeah. No, you have to use it. What's the point? Right. Exactly. And yeah. now I finally have tools that work for me that how I flow and I'm like, oh, y'all not ready for you're going to be sick of me. Is it? <laughs> 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 so, I cannot wait because I'm setting stuff up, but I figured out my flow after all these years. There's such new technology and things that come out that I can have the best of both worlds. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, I've got what works for me. But that is really important. And they have apps. So I could do it from my phone, yeah. do it at the desk. I could be on the playground and and get something real quick if I need to. And that helps as a mompreneur is critical. <laughs> it's just being mobile and being able to continue when you need to. Like you still, you focus on your kids. But when you have a moment and everybody's cool, it's like, okay. And having that thing, those lists of things that you want to get working on and move, that'll move the needle first. God, I feel like we're just like business soulmates. (laughs) (laughs) I just, everything you say, I'm like, yes, I know. Yes. (laughs) Okay. Just going to contain my excitement a little bit here on the other end of the screen. All right. Let's move it to the lightning round. You ready? All right. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. What is your go-to like get it done song? I am a big K-pop fan. I love K-pop and um, Stray Kids. They're right now are just doing it. And their song Domino, it gets me hyped. The kids were just jamming to it, but it's like the frequency of it. And it just, I put that on in my headphones and I'm like, let's go. And it's just, it gets me (laughs) pumped. I I love it. Every time I play it, I just start moving and my mind is going and it's just, I love it. I don't know what this is, but I'm going to add it to my playlist. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Drink is Domino. It's like, you may not understand everything because it's like they mix Korean and all that, but just the beat, the energy, it's just, it's so awesome. All right. Nice. Okay. Would you consider yourself more of an introvert or an extrovert? (sighs) I, it's so weird. I, I feel I am a introvert as in like, I don't like groups. I don't like to be around a lot of people. Um, I prefer, I prefer one-on-one and just more intimate settings. Um, it, it's just, I thrive better in that. Like I don't need to be in a group of people. It's like, uh, no, <laughs> that's just kind of where I flow. All right. Okay. Uh, what's your guilty pleasure TV show right now? Um, I already binge watch, but, uh, the last kingdom on Netflix, I finished Ooh. the whole season in one night and like, yes. All right. Just, <laughs> I was like, I'm only going to watch one episode and then tomorrow I'll finish. Next thing I know the birds are chirping and I'm like crying. And, oh my gosh. That was so good. So yeah. All right. <laughs> Sounds binge worthy for sure. What is one food? If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Calories don't count. I I struggled with that. Like, because I love so many. I would, oh gosh. I think sushi. I think sushi. I, it was between sushi and pizza. And I'm like, "Ah, I think sushi. Both good choices. Both solid choices there. Yeah. All right, nail salon, hair salon, or spa. You can only pick one to visit for the rest of your life. Which one is it? Absolutely spa. Um, because I just, I've always like I enjoy doing my hair, so like that's like a thing for me. But uh spa would be that's amazing because I never get this chance to just uh, relax and just have that moment. So absolutely spa. Yeah. And what uh what is one app you can't live without? 
oh my gosh, right now I have, uh, um, it's Walling, W-A-L-L-I-N-G. And I think it's fairly new, but it's visual. So it's like, you know how you could basically just post things and it's like walls. And so, and they make different bricks. So as a visual person, I can have a quick idea and just throw it up on the wall and then I can categorize it later or put images and just connect things and links. And it's all on a wall. And so I have right now, I already have like 20 different walls and then they have your daily desk, which every day it's a fresh wall that just, you could just immediately from your phone or wherever the computer and like just add a brick and add a thought or add an image. And then later you can move it to one of the walls later. So I, it's just helped me because I usually have a notepad or something, but organize and be able to just plan and come up and then I can move it to where I need to. So that has been the best find. I just, it's just made my life so much easier. That one. And I have one other one. Otter.io has like saved me so much time being able to do transcripts <laughs> and Got it. So taking all that content and being able to put it all together and utilize it. So nice. Okay, cool. Two apps I've never heard of. They sound awesome. Have to check them out. All right. Well, before we wrap up this awesome conversation, please, please, please tell our listeners where they can find you. Well, I am currently on uh, Instagram, uh, Pinterest. It's Instagram is uh, at Think with a C Design Studio. Um, I also have another account, Women Position to Win with the two, um, the number two. Uh, those are both on Instagram. And then Pinterest, it's Women Position to Win. Um, and I'm on LinkedIn. I brushed off my LinkedIn profile, you know, I I'm going back into LinkedIn. It's it's but I am there. But I also get learn more on website think with the C design studio.com. I do some writing, uh kiaheider.com. That's my where I have a blog and digital products and all those things. And so, but my work is Think Design Studio, and that's where I do all my services. And so yeah, that's where I am. And yeah, and I, I do have some writing on Medium, but um, it's catching up right now. Like right now I'm in all my content, uh, building up systems, and then I'll get back to putting content out there. Yeah. So best place, thinkdesignstudio.com. Think with yes. a C. We'll have these links in the show notes too, so you can access them there. Mm-hmm. And of course, like I mentioned, Kia was uh, a guest expert in Biz Management Club, which we've had that amazing workshop in our resource yes. library. So if you join us in Biz Management Club, you will yes. get access to that too. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kia. So happy that you joined us here today and just so thank grateful you. for you. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to the Mama Work It podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and would love if you could take a quick minute to leave me a review on whichever platform you're listening from and maybe even send a note to a fellow mama friend recommending it. Reviews and recs help this podcast grow and reach more like-minded, awesome moms. And if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click that button so we can stay in touch, girl. By the way, if you haven't checked out the Mama Work It website, please do. There are lots of free resources and great articles there that can help you with the juggle of work life, mom life, wife life, fill in the blank life. So head on over. Thanks again for being part of the tribe. I'll see you soon. But in the meantime, keep on working it, mama.